Here's an example where we solve a system of two linear equations by graphing. So I have two examples here. So let's try the first one. So we have y equals 2 over 3x minus 1 and y equals 2x minus 5. So for solving this system, we're going to see where do these two lines intersect. That's going to be the solution. Okay, so we can tell right now that they are going to intersect because their slopes are different. If their slopes were the same, they might be parallel lines, in which case they'd never intersect, or they might be the same line. So we know they're going to intersect somewhere, so let's graph them. So in my opinion, the easiest way to graph um, a line is to start at the y-intercept here, which is negative 1 for the first one, and then what I like to say is move with the slope. Okay, So this starts at negative 1 down here, Okay, and then as you can see, the slope is 2 thirds. So that's 2 over 3, and remember, our slope is our rise over our run. So that means we are rising 2 and running 3. So we're going to rise 2, so 1, 2, and then we're going to run 3. 1, 2, 3. Boom. And then let's do another one. We're going to rise 2, 1, 2, and run 3. 1, 2, 3. Boom. Okay. Now you can, if you want, go kind of all the way across your paper to do this. I mean, it's always safe to do that in case you don't see the intersection here. So I am going to draw a line here this point all the way to this point. Boom. Okay. Now, if it didn't cross, I mean, if I had had a ruler, I could do it with a ruler because the way I'm doing it now, I like to do it from point to point. But of course, that line goes, continues on forever. Um, all right. So let's graph the next one. So let's use blue. I think this should be good enough. So we've got y equals 2x minus 5. Okay. So again, start at the y-intercept, which is negative 5. So all the way down here. Negative 5. Good. And then um, we are going to, the slope is 2 over 1, which means we rise 2 and run 1. So let's go up 2, 1, 2, run 1. Good. Up 2, 1, 2, run 1. Right there. Up 2, 1, 2, run, run 1. Oh, look, that's the intersection. So for good measure, let's do a, little, a few more points here. Okay. Good. Now I'm going to connect them. And again, if you're doing this on a test, you should use a ruler and make the line go all the way across. I'm just doing it this way because of the program that I have. I need to go from point to point. Boom. Okay. So as we can see here, oh, whoops. Forgot I got to change back to the other thing here. Boom. Here is the intersection. And what point is that? Well, let's look. We are 1, 2, 3 for our x, and we are up 1 for our y. Okay, so the solution is 3, 1. So let me move that back to back. So the answer is going to be 3, 1. Now, your teacher might want you to write x equals 3, y equals 1. Um, I'm, it, you just go by whatever they say. Um, I'm used to giving it as an ordered pair, um, as, especially when you're solving by graphing. Uh, but you can also write x equals 3, y equals 1. So here's something that's so important. It's so important that we check our work. Okay, because we got to make sure that that's right. We could have made a mistake somewhere. So to do a check, we go over here, and all we're going to do is we're going to plug... Um, 3 in for x and 1 in for y into both equations and see if it works. Okay, so we'll take the first one, which is y equals 2 over 3x minus 1. So again, we're going to plug in 3 for x and 1 for y. So is it true that 1 equals 2 thirds times x was 3 minus 1? Is that true? So is it true that 1 equals 2 thirds times 3 is just going to be 2 because the 3's go away and go to 1. So 2 minus 1. And yep, 1 equals 2 minus 1. Good. So it worked. Let's check it in the other one. Um, so I'll come down here. Uh, I'll do the check again. So check it in the other one, which was y equals 2x minus 5. 
So again, we want to know, is it true that 1 equals 2 times 3 minus 5? So that's going to be 1 equals 6 minus 5. And that is true. 1 equals 1. Good. So it's correct. So the answer to this first one is 3 comma 1 or x equals 3, y equals 1. All right, so let's try this next one because this next one's a lot of fun, I think. Okay, so for this next one, we have y equals negative 2 and x equals 6. Okay, so you may have memorized that y, whenever it's y equals and then just a constant, that is a horizontal line. <laughs> And whenever it's x equals something, that's a vertical line, okay? I know that's kind of a <laughs> interesting horizontal line, but you get the point, okay? Drawing it freehand. That's why you always use a ruler. So um, I don't want you to memorize it, though. I want you to, to be it because what if you forget or what if you mess it up? You know what I'm saying? So let's think about if it makes sense that that's the case. So, well, if we have y equals negative 2, if we were to write that in slope-intercept form, that would be y equals 0x minus 2. Okay, so how would we graph that? Well, we would go to negative 2, and then we have a slope of 0, which means we're not rising anywhere, so it is just going to be a horizontal line here at negative 2. So let me actually just erase that, because I can make a nice horizontal line here at negative 2. Okay? So that's a way to think about it too, is think about it as the slope is zero. The slope is zero, okay? You can also think about it, this is like another way to think about it right here as y always equals negative two. So no matter what x is, it could be negative 10, it could be negative four, it could be four, it's y is always negative two. So you're always gonna, so say to yourself, it doesn't matter what x is, y is always negative two, and you could do dot, 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 going all the way across, right? All right, so let's think about it with x. So let me go to blue here. So we have x equals 6. So you might know, oh, okay, that's a vertical line at x equals 6. So let's think about it again the same way we thought about the y. What this is basically saying to us is x is always 6. No matter what y is, x is always 6. So it's going to be a vertical line at x equals 6. Boom. Okay. So again, we're solving the system here, and we see that they intersect right here. Okay. So what point is that? Well, that looks to be, let's see, I went over 6, and I went down 2. So 6, negative 2 is going to be our solution. And look at that, negative 2, 6. Now, obviously, y is first. So y equals negative 2, x equals 6. So that is the solution. And it's because x is always 6 and y is always negative 2. So the only place they could possibly intersect is 6, negative 2. Now, the check for this one's really easy because <laughs> when you're just plugging in, you know, if we write over here, x equals 6, y equals negative 2, if we were to just check it, so y equals negative 2, so plug the y answer in, so that's negative 2 equals negative 2, that's easy, and then for x equals 6, we know, well, we solved and said that x equals 6, so 6 equals 6, so it's right, okay? So it's a really kind of good way to remember it, is just think that when you see y equals and then just a constant, it means y is always that number x equals and then a constant, it means x is always that number. Okay? Good?